Pastor Buddy and Sister Ann Wimberly from Lanny Road Baptist Church. We're welcoming you to our online broadcast. We're a fundamental King James Bible believing church that loves Jesus Christ and one another. We're located at 5998 Lanny Road on the extreme north side of Jacksonville, but we would love to have you visit one of our services in person. Our regular services are 11 a.m. on Sunday and 6 p.m. on Sunday, and then Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Now, we thank you for tuning in today. Uh, so now, let's go join one of our live services that's already in progress. Jesus, standing on his promises and leaning in his everlasting arms and trust and obey, good stuff. Page 101, 101, standing on the promises in B flat. On the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior. Standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises that cannot fail, when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing. promises I now can see perfect present cleansing in the blood for me standing in the liberty where Christ makes free 
standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing. standing on the promises of God. Amen. Tell it, Brother Mark, how about you open us in prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for providing us with your word to study, your word to hear, and our open heart to hear it. Yes. And we thank you now for all the blessings that we've seen on you, and even the lessons we don't see, and we don't know our blessing yet. And we thank you for everything you do for us. And we ask you now Amen. Thank you. You can be seated. Amen. And I'm going to be first tonight to give a blessing. Amen. I tell you what, y'all know the monsoon rains we've had the last couple of weeks. Well, this week was set aside to re-roof my nephew's house. So we prayed, Lord, we sure do need some good weather to get this roof done. Well, the Lord not only gave us three days so far, beautiful, clear weather, no rain, but record breaker, almost record breaking cooler temperatures. Yeah, amen. So if, if no rain wasn't enough, he went even a step further and amen. it cooled it off. So I tell you, I just, I get tickled every time I think about it. It's just like, wow, that's just amazing. Yeah, so so I'm, just, I'm just thrilled. Amen. So it's all stripped off and it's all dried back in. And starting at 6 in the morning, we'll be nailing new shingles back on it. So right. I'm just excited. So Amen. anyway, anybody else who's like, I, mean, I don't want to be hog at all. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Amen to that. Good. Now, where is he? Okay. A long ways away. Brother Donnie? We never do. So. All right. Any others before we press on? Yes, Miss Thelma. From one year down to three and a half months. God is good. That's wonderful news. Did you have your hand up, Miss Alicia?
Amen. Amen. All right. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Page 175. 175, A flat. now. That song got higher and higher. <laughs> Whew, I was struggling on that one. <coughs> All right. See that or I put them too low. Isn't that right, Frank? You got to reach way down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're still talking about trusting our Lord and Savior. Amen. Page 204. Trust and obey. Key of F. Trust and obey. Two oh four. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh nor a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toll he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, 
but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delight of his love unto all on the altar we lay. For the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he says we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. But to trust and obey. It's the last time I let Rick pick my songs. <laughs> All right. Leaning on the everlasting arms, 307. Key of A, Alpha. 307. Somebody's bound to have another blessing. One more. Go right ahead, Miss Laurie. Amen. Nothing like some time off. Anything to inquire? Nothing. All right, y'all can be seated.
Amen. Amen to that. There it is.
that holds a body that's paralyzed with pain. The doctors have all tried, oh, but hope is in vain. Oh, but wait, someone's praying. So good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Uh, it's, it is good to be here. I know that we are still trying to recover from uh, folks not feeling comfortable yet. I hope that's all that's going on. Um, I, I hope there's not a falling away. You know that? Amen. That's right. I told you this past weekend, don't you give up. It's just in view. Man, I can almost hear the dishes clanging, clanging together as they're setting the wedding table. Amen. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm just telling you. Uh, tonight, I just, uh, I, I had the uh, opportunity today to spend some time with Brother TJ off for a couple of hours. Y'all pray for me. Um, <laughs> That's a joke. Um, actually, we had a great time together, and we were able to, to get some things accomplished that we needed to do. Uh, Brother TJ is going to be our new hospital minister, and he's now been certified, deputized, anointed, and appointed. And uh, he's ready to go, so we're thankful for that. Uh, he said God had laid that upon his heart and upon his wife's heart some time ago, and, uh, and God just uh, allowed us to have that opportunity to do that. Uh, Brother Dave uh, has given us so many years of wonderful service, and uh, we thank God for that. Amen. And um, so as Brother, Brother TJ stands in and represents this church going to minister to folks that are going through surgeries and things of that nature, and to be the, an extension of the pastor of this church, uh, helping uh, this pastor in particular to be able to stay in communication and connection with you guys as you go through your stuff. I greatly appreciate it. But while we were traveling today, we were talking about some folks. He said something that triggered some things, and I almost did a message on it tonight, but I already had things ready. So, um, but he said something about Brother, uh, brother Bill Tyson. He said, because uh, he, he he mentioned to me uh, he had no idea that God would use him in, in the nursing home ministry the way that God has, except that Bill Tyson, he said, couldn't figure out why that old man kept coming by his house. 
and would pick him up and say, you need to get ready now and let's go, and would take him up to that nursing home. And whenever there was already four, three or four guys up there that was ready to do ministry, and uh, he kept doing that over and over and over again. <laughs> he said one time, Bill told him, said, now you know where it's at now, right? <laughs> you know how to get there, right? And gave him instructions. And what it did was it flashed me back in my mind to a man named Jim Turner. And I began to think about all the times that Jim Turner encouraged me Amen. in a time that I needed to be encouraged to ministry. Encouraged me to step out and do things when I wasn't willing to step out. I'll never forget uh, where there was, we were waiting for some money to come in. I was waiting for some money to come in so that we could move, move to the next phase of something in this building. I don't remember precisely what it was, but I kept waiting. And, and Brother Jim come in, and he sat in our committee meeting, and he looked over at me, and he said, Brother Buddy, the Lord told me to tell you, let's go ahead and do it. And I said, Brother Jim, that's easy to say sitting over there. we got to pay for it. He said, the Lord told me he'd pay for it if we'd do it. And I said, oh, Brother Jim, that's I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the one that's got to make good that payment. I said, I, I don't see it. And so he kept on and he kept on and he kept on at me. You know what? I didn't listen to him that day. The next time I saw him, he done me that way again. And he said, I'm just telling you, the Lord said if you'll do it, he'll take care of it. He made me feel so ashamed of myself for not trusting God without having the money already. And so I said, I tell you what, I'm going to make the call. Let's see if we can do it. And I remember that we called, and they said they were ready to come. They came. When they got done with their part, we had the money. And I'll never forget looking at him. He just smiled at me the way he could, <laughs> reminding me that he already knew that's the way it was going to turn out, challenging me to step forward. It brought to my mind that God's always sending somebody into your life Amen. to try to encourage you to trust God more tomorrow than you did yesterday. And we resist that. Yeah, we do. But God's always trying to draw you closer to Himself. And He'll take people that's maybe already walked that path. Mm. I thought about Simeon. Let me go ahead and share with you my thoughts. I thought about Simeon of the New Testament. Remember when um, uh, they brought the baby Jesus into the temple and Simeon picked the child up and he began to prophesy and he began to shout to the Lord. He said, now you can take me home, Lord. I've seen, I've seen your salvation. And, uh, and he, had, he had been promised, God had promised him and, and the encouragement that his prophecy gave to those that heard him that this was the promised child. And I want to talk to you about that a little bit more in the book of St. John chapter number 10 tonight. We'll be looking at chapter 10 going to verse number 24, talking to you about the subject, they shall never perish. Now if there's one thing that, um, that I think has been misconstrued is that the doctrine of eternal security is a Baptist doctrine. That is the biggest lie that's ever been constructed. It's not a Baptist doctrine. It's a Bible doctrine. Amen. It's something that the Bible teaches us. And by the way, if you believe something just because the Baptists believe it, shame on you. Right. We believe it because the Bible says it. I don't care what the Baptists think. I'm more concerned with what God thinks. And what God says is they shall never perish. I want to take you starting in verse number 24, the doctrine that reminds us that when you are born again, you have this precious promise that you shall never perish. Father, bless the reading and the preaching of your word tonight. May it move in our hearts and draw us closer. May it be an encouragement like those men were encouragement to us like we just mentioned. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, then came the Jews round about him. Jesus had come into the temple and he had walked through and it was the winter time I think the verses say up ahead. And they, and they said unto him, how long? I can hear the antagonistic tone in their voice. How long does thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness 
of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You might want to highlight verse 27 for a, a private time study sometime. I mean, you can just take that one verse and meditate on that for a while, and that might change your whole day, week, month, life. Verse 27, my sheep hear my voice, Jesus said, I know them and they follow me and I give unto them. Notice, I give unto them. He's the good shepherd. He gives unto his sheep eternal life and they shall never perish. That's not, not perish for a little while or not perish till they do something wrong or not perish till I can't hold on to them anymore. They shall never perish. I don't think he's mixing words here. They shall never perish and neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. He might have been doing okay up till now, and then he told them. This is the last verse, 30. He, he, was, he, he, might have, he might have been all right if he hadn't have stepped on this one, but he said, and I and my Father are one. My Father's greater than all, and nobody can pluck them out of my Father's hand. He said, you can't pluck them out of my hand. They have eternal life that I have given unto them. And they shall never perish. Ain't nothing you can do about it. And the reason you ain't going is because you ain't one of mine. Amen. Oh, my goodness. That's kind of going backwards a little bit, but that's exactly what he said to them. I want you to look in verse 24. The Jews kind of surrounded him. They went round about him, and they, they were ready to antagonize. They wanted to trip him up. They wanted to uh, get him to emotionally respond. They began to taunt him by saying, Why don't, how long are you going to make us doubt? Notice how they began to blame him for their doubt. That's pretty bold and brass of them. That's the first thing that come to my mind. How can they blame Jesus for their own doubts? And then I got to thinking, buddy, you've done the same thing. Don't, don't, don't leave and don't turn us off. Have you ever said, oh, I wish God would just tell me what he wanted me to do. Yeah. More than once. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, I wish the Lord would just let me know what his will is, and I'd be honored to do it for him. <laughs> you notice what he said to them? He said, I've already told you. They were blaming him for their rejection of the truth. If they had already been told, and yet they were in doubt, they were tossing it around to try to make, see if there was any credibility to it, whether they could believe in it or not, then they were rejecting the revealed truth. It had already been opened unto them. He had already pulled back and give them the truth, and they had chose to reject it, that just like I have done when I said, God, I want to know your will. He must be going like, duh, I've told you already. I've shown you over and over. I've told you. I've sent you messages from the pulpit. I have sung you songs from the radio. I have spoken to you through the Holy Spirit. I have talked to you in prayer. I have showed you in the Word of God. I have talked to you by witnesses that's come by, and you're still asking me to show you. You know why I was doing that? Because I didn't want to hear. Yeah. Right. I, I hope you're hearing me tonight because I don't think I'm the only one. 
I know so many times God speaks to us. And because it don't fit well, we want to blame him and saying, God, why don't you tell us plainly? Tell me plainly how much plainer can he get? He said in that verse, he said, I told you and you believed not. He didn't say, I told you and you had doubts. He didn't say, I told you and you didn't understand. He didn't say, I told you and it was confusing to you. He said, I told you and you rejected it. How much plainer they want him to get? He's pretty plain right here. I'm I'm trying to be pretty plain with you. When God speaks to you and you sit there like a knot on a log. And you keep saying, God, I wish you would just stir my soul. I wish I could feel the Spirit of God like I used to. And God's going like, I'm blowing him all over you. It ain't my fault. You're rejecting it. You're resisting it in every way. You believe not. Mm. Man, I'm I'm preaching as much good as what y'all hearing it. He said, if thou be, they said, they said to him, if thou be the Christ, just plainly, tell us plainly. And Jesus said, I did tell you, you believe not. He said, the works that I do have even testified. They have followed up. They have given evidence or witness to the fact that I'm telling you the truth. Not only have I told you, but you've received witness from other ways. Amen. You've seen it everywhere you turn. We talk to you all the time about the fact that God doesn't just speak in one way. He speaks in various ways to confirm His Word to you. And I know those of you that's ever heard from Him, maybe somebody here ain't never heard, but if you've ever heard from Him, you know it comes in various ways. He confirms it more than one way. Man, He supports His Word. He, he backs it up and He reinforces it. And it ain't it funny how we can then turn to God and say, Lord, I wish you'd tell me plainly. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Have you ever done that? Have you ever? I mean, just think about the times that we have looked in the face of God and say, how much longer are you going to cause me to doubt and wait? God's not the problem. God has spoken clearly. He's re- it's God's will that His will be revealed unto us. God's not trying to hide anything. It's the good pleasure of God that we know the open heart and mind of God. That's what He wants. He has given us of His Holy Spirit to what purpose? To what purpose? So that we would know the mind of Christ. So that we would know what it is that God wants for us. And what do we do? We quench that spirit. And we think in our own carnal and fleshly attitudes. And then we say, God, why don't you show me? Why don't you talk to me? Why don't you open up to me? Why don't you be plain with me and quit making me doubt? And Christ has never made anyone to doubt. Amen. He's only told the truth. He's only revealed himself to be your Savior your deliverer. Your unbelief has to rest in your own chest. Your unbelief has to rest in your own mind of carnal thinking, of trying to process what you've heard and trying to line it up to see if it falls into place with what you want or not. You know what the problem is? You have a will. I'm not talking about the kind of thing you live when you die. I'm not talking about the thing you leave behind that you sit down and read it at the lawyer's office. You have your will, your desire, your nature for living life. It is in you. When you get born again, God deposits the will of God through the Spirit of God into you. There's now two people living in me. Me and the Holy Spirit. And I got to tell you, I wish I could tell you, (laughs) let me say it this way, I wish I could tell you that since he moved in, all I ever listen to and follow is his will. 
but I can't tell you that. I have failed that more times than I can tell you. I have squashed the voice of the Holy Spirit, and I have exalted the voice of my own will, and I have done what I wanted to do despite what I knew God wanted to do. But what was really strange at the same time, I was saying, God, why don't you tell me? At the very same time of rejecting the Spirit of God in me, I'm pointing the finger and say, you should tell me. How could you let me go astray? How could you let me doubt? How could you let me fall into that sin again? How could you let me fall to that same old habit over and over again? I'd, I'd be blaming God for it. God said, I told you. I told you plainly. I, 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 all the works that I've done, all the other witnesses, all the things that have come have confirmed that what I told you was truth, and you still followed your own will. Altars are open all the time if God convicts your heart. Jesus quickly reflected the blame back to them and, and their rejection of the revealed truth. He pointed out quickly you can't blame me for this. I've never tried to hide from you who I am. I told you plainly. You would not believe. Look at verse 26 real quick. He says, you didn't believe or you believe not is the words he actually says. And the reason? Because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, I told you the reason that you wouldn't hear. I told the reason you kept rejecting is because you've never trusted in me. You've never received me. You've never, you've never had the call and received the call. Listen to me for a second. I want to explain something very carefully to you. The, the carnal man cannot discern the things of the Spirit. They are spiritually discerned. That's why wise men will die and go to hell. And ignorant men may hear the truth and receive it and be born again. Because it's, it's on, the, on the full and, and unadulterated um, uh, um, evidence and, and grounds of receiving a call and responding to the call. Can I tell you this real quick? I said it, said it to you the other day, I believe. I'll try to say it to you again. It might have been a Bible study. That's why, that's why you can only get saved when God calls you. You can't get saved till God is drawing you. And some folks just think that they want to put it off to a certain time. will never, never get born again at their time on their terms. It'll never happen. Uh, they, they think they're seeking after God. I was listening to a, a, a southern gospel country song, and for the first time I thought, oh my gosh, why I like that song so much? I know why I like it. It's got a good beat. But it said, I kept on searching till I found the King of Kings. I kept on searching, kept on searching. Kept... No, you don't. He's the one that seeks after us. We don't go looking after him. He comes seeking after us. What we have done, what we have done and what we're guilty of, we have kept on rejecting and kept on rejecting and kept on rejecting. Thank God he's been the one that kept seeking and kept calling and kept calling. And the only way you ever got born again, if you've ever been born again, was because one day when he called, you said yes. You surrendered, and you came in, and you became one of his. How do I know this? He says, my sheep hear my voice. He didn't say that my sheep come to me. He didn't say my sheep call out to me. He said, my sheep hear my voice. When I call, the ones that will come hear. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Let him hear. And they come, they respond. Those that have been prepared by the Spirit of God and have heard the call and will humble themselves get to come in. They become the sheep. It's a wonderful, wonderful doctrine. 
I, st I started out by telling you that this doctrine is a doctrine that they know of is eternal security or, or um, once saved, always saved is what some people call it. Uh, some folks believe that it's a damnable doctrine, that it gives false hope to the believers. But I, I can't help what believers have hope in. All I can do is tell you what the truth of the gospel is. And if you want to twist it to have false hope in some doctrine, that's going to be on your head. I'm telling you today that when you truly get born again. When He saves you, He keeps you saved because He's the one that done the saving in the beginning. Amen? It wasn't nothing to do with you to do, get in. It won't be, you can't be nothing that you can do to get out. In fact, He says later on, no man can pluck them out. Ain't nobody can do nothing about it once you're in. Right. My sheep hear my voice. He says, and I know them. I, I, I like verse 27 because I ask you to highlight that one. Look at the progressive characteristics of a true believer. Look at that. My sheep, they hear my voice. <laughs> I know them, and they follow me. Man, that's the way it's supposed to be. When they hear, they receive it. The command is believed, right? And then they follow. They obey. I, there, I think too many times in the churches that's been forgotten. We believe that folks can some, come down somehow and say a prayer. Dear Lord, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me and save me. And you're in. That's a bad doctrine. That's right. That's going to send many folks to hell thinking they got in because they said a prayer, signed a card, shook a preacher's hand, went through the pool. Amen? Amen. And, they, and they left out of here as much as, as a lost sinner as they was when they came in. Because what it takes is that you must hear His voice. He knows you and you hear His command and you follow Him. Your will is broken. You become submissive and surrendered to follow Him. That's why I want to let you know 27 is one I think you can meditate on for a while. You think about all the implications of what it's like for the shepherd to say, My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Think about all the implications a shepherd would be talking about when he's talking about his flock of sheep. And then imagine as you sit and, and put yourself in that category and say, how is it? How is it that I must follow Him? Am I truly following Him? Am I following Him? Am I just saying that I follow Him? Do I dress like I follow Him? Do I just put on the cologne that makes me smell like I'm following Him? Or do I truly follow Him? Who am I following? Who am I following? When I'm out in the... When I'm out with others, when I'm living in the same um, environment of the people in the world, can there be a difference sustained? Is there be, can anybody tell that I am really following after the Master? Truly walking after the Lord. Jesus said in verse number 28, He said, I give unto them my sheep because they follow me. I give unto them eternal life, and they shall, I, in my notes, because what I do in my notes, I just print out the Scripture, and then I come back and I write a whole bunch of thoughts is what I do. That's my notes. I just print out the Scripture. And underneath that word, they shall never perish, I put about 15 underlines. They shall never perish. They shall never perish perish. In fact, I thought that was so impactful to me, I wanted to make that the title of the sermon, They sh Shall Never Perish. In other words, I'm one of His sheep and that'll never change. I know, I, I hear His voice and He knows me and that will never change. I hear, I hear His voice, He knows me and I follow after Him and that'll never change. I am His. I will always be his. I may not always be the best sheep he's got, but I'm going to always be his sheep. Amen. I want to be a good sheep. I, I need to start listening better. I need to start obeying more. I, you know what I'm talking about? I need to start hearing and receiving what he's saying instead of saying, God, why do you, why you keep hiding it from me? Why do you make me doubt? I need to be receiving what he says and doing what he says without questioning what he says. Walking after Him. But even if, even if I fail in that area sometimes, this verse says they shall never 
perish. And neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. I'm grateful for that. What a promise that is. What a promise he has given to those who will hear his voice, like he told us back up in verse 27. What a promise. If you hear my voice, listen, and I know you and you follow me, I will never, ever, ever forsake you. I'll never forget you. I'll never leave you behind. I'll never kick you to the curb. I'll never deny knowing that you are mine. You might have somebody in the family that sometimes you've wanted to say, you know what, when they ask if I'm kin to that feller, I want to say, mm, don't know him. <laughs> but not, not Jesus. No matter how much of a rascal you and I have been, no matter how miserable we have failed, we trusted him and we became his. He took all the responsibility for both our successes and our failures. And, and I know what happens with those that don't believe in this doctrine of the security of the believer. I know they think that, Brother Buddy, how can you say that you can live a disappointing way before the Lord and He still receive you and keep you? Uh, isn't that crazy that, that you could say you're saved and yet not live a, a life that brings honor and glory to Him? I, I'm just telling you that it's not based on me. Amen. All I'm saying is it's not based on me. I know there's some folks that live a much better dedicated life maybe than I do, but they don't know him as personal Savior. They will not get in. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus said there were going to be many in that day that were going to be saying to him, Lord, we cast out devils in thy name. And in thy name, in thy name, Brother Charles, we've done many marvelous works in your name. We worked ministry all of our life. We followed everything. He's going to say unto them, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. It's not on the basis of your work or mine. It's on the basis of his. Have you heard his voice and believed? Have you heard his voice and received? Have you heard his voice and obeyed him? That's what I'm asking you tonight. The Jews, these Jewish leaders that surrounded him in the house of God, they began to taunt him, and they said unto him, How long are you going to cause us to be in doubt? Tell us plainly. Jesus immediately says, I have told you. If he was standing before us right now, and by the way, he is, and he wants to ask you the question, and he may be, how come you have not believed? You would say, I believe. And he would say, then why are you accusing me of doubt being cast upon you? He said to these Jewish leaders, when they said, why do you cause us to doubt? He said, I told you the truth, and you believed not. Your problem is unbelief. Even though you say you believe, you may be stuck in unbelief tonight. Mm. I wish I was preaching to a hundred million, but I really only want to be preaching to that one that needs to hear this tonight. Just the one. If he's spoken to you and he's revealed that truth to you, it is absolutely your responsibility to respond to surrender, to receive, believe, and obey His Word. Jesus said, I give unto them whenever they obey, when they surrender unto me, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. He gives that to His sheep, to those who just simply place their trust in Him for their eternal care. He doesn't ask them to change. I know some folks that have told me in the past, Brother Buddy, I, I, I want to be saved, and if I could ever quit drinking, or if I could ever quit my drugs, or if I could ever quit cursing, or if I could ever get my life straightened out, I would come and get saved. I said, we'll never see you. That's not who God wants. He wants you just like you are. He wants you to bring all your broken things. He wants you to bring your broken spirit. 
and he wants you to trust him to heal you. He said, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. What a great promise. He gives that to who? He gives that to his sheep. The ones that hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. No man, he says in the ending verses, no man can pluck them out of my Father's hand. And then he says in verse 30, I and my Father are one. When he comes to this place, I want to take you back up to verse, where do we start at 26, I think it was, 24, verse 24, when, whenever he came into the temple and they said, how long are you going to make us doubt, tell us plainly, uh, are thou the Christ? Look at verse number 30, and he says plainly to them, I and my Father are one. Verses, uh, two verses ahead of that, he says, they're in my hand and no man can get them out. Verse 29, they're in my Father's hand and no man is greater than him, can't get them out of there. And I and my Father are one. So what's they, what are they getting? They're getting what they asked for back in verse 24 when they said, tell us plainly. And now he's telling them, I am the great I am. I am He that spoke and the universe came into you. I am He that said, let there be light, and there was light. Amen. I am He that sculptured from the very beginning of the foundation of the world the plan of salvation. I am He. My Father and I are one. Nothing that ever was made was made without me. I am He. What were they getting? They were getting exactly what they had asked for. If we had kept reading, you'd find out they took up stones. <laughs> they took up stones to stone him. Why? Because he gave them what they asked for. Does that mean they believed it, Brother Frank? No. It means that they heard something once again that, as you just said, that they didn't like. Right. It, it, you, it, if, they're, if they're begging him to tell us plainly and we'll believe, then they should have believed in verse number 30. Yeah. But they didn't. He did tell them very plainly again, they're in my hand and they won't die. They're in the Father's hand and they shall never perish. And I and the Father are one. Uh, um, I believe when he said that, uh, that might have rocked their world, you know. And when they heard that, they knew. He was referencing the fact that he is the almighty God. They considered that blasphemy instead of truth. They didn't believe him. They rejected him even more. And you would find in the verses following, they took up stones. Said, we're going to kill this guy because he's a blasphemer. So, may I ask you, are you asking God to speak to you so that you might reject him more fully? Is that the case? Are you really looking to change? Listen, do you really want to hear what he has to say so that you can then follow him? If so, he tells you plainly. He opens it very plainly. But it's always astounding to me that we as his people, his sheep, his believers, we hear it but we don't receive it. In truth, don't get mad at me. In truth, we don't believe it. It's unbelief. Amen. You call it what you want to call it. He called it unbelief. He said, I told you and you believe not. This is pretty stiff tonight, and we should have saved this for a Sunday. You need to recognize that as God is speaking to you, God is speaking to us tonight. You might be thinking, man, but but you should have saved that for some of the folks that ain't here. Amen. They need to hear it, right. don't they? <laughs> God help us right. to always be willing to hear what God says to us. The toughest thing I've ever imagined in my life, and I face it on a daily basis. I'm going to confess to you something tonight. Don't tell nobody else. I face on a daily basis my own stubborn pride and my stubborn will. Amen. 
I told you before, there's two people in me. There's me and the Holy Spirit. And constantly, listen, you can't serve two masters, so both of them cannot rule within the domain of this body. Not at the same time. Somebody has to be repressed. Somebody has to be diminished so the other can be exalted. And I would say to you, if you ask me to my face, especially in a church house in front of a bunch of Christian people, if you said, Brother Buddy, uh, which one do you want to show forth more in your life, your own will or the will of God? I would say the will of God. But the truth of the matter is, by the way that we live our lives, yeah. Amen. we suppress, Scripture calls it, quench the spirit. Amen. And we exalt the old man. We walk after the carnal. We walk after the fleshly desires. And then we ask God to bless it. And then we go like, how come God you're not blessing my life? How come you're not revealing yourself to me? How come God I don't feel your spirit anymore? How come the preacher's an idiot? And I, you know, we have all the things that we, we start blaming all around us. And Jesus says, I told you plainly, and you believed not. You rejected me. You're getting what you asked for. So if I could tell you once again, like he did at verse 30, I would tell you once again, he's not just the Son of God. He is God. Amen. He's not just the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. He is God, the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. And they are one, the same. If you think that you might find another route to go, another doctrine to believe, another Savior to place your trust in, if you think somehow that you can conjure up and wait till you get something different or down the pipeline, maybe you can ask God one more time and He might do like your daddy used to do. Maybe your daddy will soften and tell you a little different. He, he's going to tell you the truth every time. It never changes. The question is, will you change. Would you bow with me in prayer? Father, I don't know how to stop tonight except to say, Lord, I'm sorry for the many times that I have heard your voice and I have rejected your truth. Lord, I'm sorry tonight for those tonight who would hear your truth tonight in this place and would reject your truth. And tomorrow we'll go back into the same life pattern that they've been in. God, I'm sorry for that. Lord, I'm sorry that, that you know, we call ourselves your children. And I, and I pray that we truly are, that we have truly heard and we have truly followed you. But Lord, I pray that that's a genuine conversion because there's going to be so many to stand before you that day and plead their case. And they're not going to have it. I can't help but believe that those folks that stand before that throne and they plead, Lord, we've done works in your name and cast out devils. I can't help but believe that they thought with all their heart that they were right, that they were okay. But they kept rejecting the truth. Jesus told these Jews, he said, you have the witness of the works that I've done. Haven't you seen all the things come and, and things try to convict you and draw you and correct you and you keep pushing everything away. Everything in this world can't be wrong and you're the only thing that's right. When God speaks to us in variable ways, we need to respond with submission and surrender. Lord, I pray that you would work your miracle through your word tonight. Let it fall on good ground and bear much fruit. May your children rejoice in the fact that we know <laughs> that
that you've given us eternal life and we shall never perish. And no man can pluck us out of your hand. We give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for your attendance tonight. Appreciate you being here. We're looking um, to see you again, I guess, on uh, Sunday morning. Uh, we are intending to open up Sunday school unless in, things change. Uh, if they do, you'll hear from us on the call them all. Um, please be aware of the um, increased number of infections that are being announced and try to just be responsible in the way that you um, act socially one with the other. May God bless you. Savior Jesus Christ through something that was sung or preached or said. If God has touched you, then I would urge you that you surrender to him today without delay. If you've made a decision to trust Christ as your personal Savior, or maybe you have chosen to surrender to him more fully in his Lordship, then I would urge you to let us know by giving us a call at 904 924 8240, or you can email me at pastor, P A S T O R, at L R B C J A X dot org. Until next time, may God be richly blessing you.